Disney Pixar's newest animated film, Luca, has finally been released, being my fifth most anticipated movie left of the summer movie season. So, is it worth the watch, and how does it stack up to the rest of Pixar's excellent library? Let's find out in the review. Welcome back, film fans. This is Let's Be Real, Brad. Today, we get to talk about the newest Pixar computer animated coming of age fantasy comedy drama film called Luca. It is directed by Enrico Casarosa in his feature length debut while also being written by Jesse Andrews and Mike Jones. Now that the film is available to watch, I have to say that I had a great time watching this film. This film works so well because director Enrico Casarosa created the film using his own childhood experiences to make a beautifully crafted and well executed animated film. He said he wanted to pay homage to Federico Fellini and other classic Italian filmmakers with a dash of Miyazaki in the mix too. It is such a gorgeous, breathtaking film that makes you sit back in awe of how incredible animation has become with feeling so lifelike and filled with excitement. The color palette is off the charts, especially if you watch the film in 4K Ultra HD because the HDR makes this film kick up. 10 notches, having one of the best color palettes in a Pixar film. The film is bright and immaculate by being able to create this warm, nostalgic, childlike summer vacation. The character designs are also charming, fun, and bubbly as each of the children can remind you of that young, innocent childlike wonder we have all had at some point in our lives. The location of the film looks very realistic as some of the film's artists traveled to the Italian Rivera to take photos and craft the scenery for the film. It paid off immensely as the world is so beautiful, filled with the tiniest details and feels so homey and cozy to be in, which is precisely what the director wanted us to feel from his childhood memories. The biggest positive I can give this movie is the themes. The film's central theme is friendship, but not just the power of friendship, but accepting one another and having common similarities and seeing the world through the other person's eyes. The power of friendship is a theme that is very common to the world of Pixar, but the way this film handles it with two young teenage boys slash sea monsters feels so organic and genuine for the direction this movie was going for. The score was initially supposed to be composed by Legendary and Nino Morricone, but passed away before being asked, so composer Dan Romar stepped in and did a fantastic job. The score was able to craft this wondrous childlike excitement that filled each scene with so much emotion that Pixar is fantastic at accomplishing. The film also includes some beautiful and catchy Italian music that adds to the film's Italian culture. I also found the directing to be very good creating fun, exciting action scenes, and beautiful jokes along the way. The editing, lighting, and cinematography are all top notch and perfect being up there with Pixar's highest standards. Now let's get on to the negative starting with the villain. I found the villain to be one of the worst villains in any Pixar film. I think this is because it seems as if the film feels forced to have a central antagonist, but it didn't need it for this movie to work, so the villain is very underdeveloped and is a dumb, stupid bully who made this movie worse. My last negative is with the story. For some people, this isn't going to bother them because it is an easygoing, fun, coming-of-age comedy drama film, but I found the fish out of water story, pun intended, Intended to be relatively lackluster and very generic. I am not expecting Pixar to reinvent the wheel by making a new version of the story, but I feel like it went through all the checkpoints that these movies have without doing anything significant other than those other kinds of films. It made the movie less engaging and entirely predictable of what was going to happen next. Another negative I have with the story is that we hardly get any scenes of the children being sea monsters. It would have been nice to see more of their world and how it differs from the human world as it feels like it just goes by in a flash. My last negative with the story 
is with the parents. They are the most generic and basic Pixar parents in this library. The only thing they offer to the film is some comedic gags while also being a plot device to keep the movie moving forward, which was quite disappointing. They are the driving force of why Luca wants to leave them and explore on his own, so having a better understanding of them can make us see both sides of the coin, creating a more substantial conflict in the audience. Luca is another fun, exciting, easygoing Pixar film that does check off many of the boxes in a fish out of water story. However, it still manages to have incredible animation, an incredible score, hilarious jokes, and an excellent genuine theme of friendship and love between one another that will probably make you cry because it executed it very well. I will say this is on the bottom tier of the Pixar rankings, but that is not a bad thing considering how many wonderful and unique films they have been able to create throughout the years. I am giving Luca a 7 out of 10. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all in the following review. <laughs>